Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, I want to thank you, Patreons, for your support. We couldn't do it without you guys. We do appreciate it so very much. Thank you. And for those um, that don't realize it, again, on every video, too, is all of our information, our contact information, information um, about like the other the links to the other channels to our patreon ko-fi every everything and also you know detailed information on setting up appointments in case you guys want a vedic astrology chart uh energy work spiritual coaching etc it's all right there it is it is and so starting out today Oh, okay. Here you go. Australia mandates food rations. Multiple sources are talking about this. This is a big buzz in the land down under. Food rationing and lockdowns arriving in Australia. As uh, you know, Australia and New Zealand, they always seem to bear the brunt of it. Canada, not too far behind when it comes to the system. Uh, and who has it the hardest? So, yeah, boy, man, there are so many great people <laughs> that we know of in Australia that are trying to do their best to just simply be their best selves and, and doing what they know is, is the way to uh, do that. And for most, <laughs> again, it's pretty simple. Try to stay organic, kids. It's true. It's true. We got to stay organic as much as possible and, and hold on to our rights. And, you know, when we do work with people over in Australia, Australia, they, they really do. They have some of the best energy and some of the more balanced energy. And they're good people. They're just good people. And I hate to see them getting picked on. This, this makes me so sad. Yeah, there is definite pushback in many, many areas. And... Uh, <laughs> We're going to do, I'm going to make a short video after this one. It's going to go up on EE Arts um, with something that is very, very telling. It really, really shows how, how much the controlling of information is going on. And uh, just as something I discovered yesterday uh, through an X account was saying, hey, you want to check this out? And it was like, Wow, this is this this is just amazing, and uh, that'll be the one that goes up next over on uh, EE Arts. You have flesh-eating bacteria spreads in Japan. A rare, or what was rare, flesh-eating bacteria, streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, spreading rapidly in Japan. 977 cases reported since the start of June, surpassing last year's record, 941. Can't kill within 48 hours. Symptom with limb pain, swelling, organ failure. Experts warn the number of cases could reach 2,500 with 30% mortality. Um, again, boost the immune system. Japan has obviously one of the highest percentage of people that did a certain thing because they fell in line so much with what was that what they were told to do so they did it and we will see again that these trends where people are leaving the world or they have no immune system anymore it's pretty obvious for I know all you guys you guys get this what's going on but I don't know if anybody gets exactly what this is. This is our friend over at Into Thin Air discovered. And there was a 6.0 that was originally a 6.4 downgraded uh, 20 kilometers deep uh, in Peru on the coastline. Um, then we get this anomalous drop in water again. Now, this is the same station that showed an anomalous drop in water before when that South Atlantic anomaly uh, happened the time before. And don't forget, there was all sorts of crazy flooding going on in Brazil and in Africa, and then also a warming of the ocean. And now, you know, we're being told, oh, you know, the uh, ocean temps are so far above what they should be 
you know, again, they don't want us understanding the type of technology in play, and some people's minds won't allow them to understand the type of technology in play. It's amazing, too. It's like a, it's th this block, and it's, it's almost like you could have uh, the perpetrators standing straight in front of them, and they wouldn't be able to see them, just, just like uh, the indigenous people couldn't see the boats of the conquistadors. You know, it's, it's like some things are so shocking you, you, you can't see it. You, your mind won't let you, let you comprehend it. Um, uh, for all our flat earth friends out there that think there's a firmament and that the earth is, is flat, you know, there are some things that they are right on top of and they, they watch and, and will point out, um, with great cynicism because we should be cynical of this system. We can, uh, you know, anybody that takes the system, you know, word for word as verbatim truth uh you know at this point in time this far in would really need to have their head examined but but not by somebody in the system because they're going to just give them something else that's going to make them you know they might give them the pro you know zac thing which again is just a mega dose of of more of the stuff that we're given every day if you're still drinking normal water uh, it's, in other words, you know, fluoridate the masses. <sighs> so what is this? This feels technology. Um, uh, what type of technology are we talking about? Cindy brought up a very, very interesting word that made me think of the flat earthers, in a sense, um, talking about what type of technology, what type of maybe even kind of semi-mechanical technology could we be talking about that would make the water column height at this station drop 4,000 meters. 4,000 meters is over 12,000 feet. That's like the height of uh, some of the biggest peaks in the Rockies. That much water displacement? I mean, you can't, we would have a massive, if that really was the case, there would have to have been a massive tsunami somewhere. What could possibly do that? And also when you look at it and you look at the data from the time that it started to finish was over five hours. 4124 is your baseline. So if you look at that 4124 and you look at where it regains that column height of 4124, you see it goes all the way down to 67, just 67 meters from 4,124 meters. Coming back to 4,125 and then staying at 4,125, so it gained a meter. It's over five hours. It was in some sort of flux all the way down to seven meters at one point in time. What is this? Now, they'll tell you that it, this is based on water pressure. You know, this is based on PSI, and they, they have a formula for that. So what could distort that f formula? Oh, well, <laughs> what, uh, what could distort that formula but not really displace that much water is, is kind of my question. Well, if, if it's pounds per square inch, I mean, this was just a thought that came to me, and I'm not saying it's correct. It could be way off. What if there was some sort of massive um, vehicle with some sort of unusual propulsion system that went over the area, you know, maybe some sort of anti-gravity? Because this is based on, on water pressure, pounds per square inch. So what if it was some sort of ship or something? with the ability to distort or even apparently remove the weight of the water where it transverses. I don't know, just a thought. Mm. You know, I, I thought chemical, I'm um, chemical, I thought mechanical right away. Um, and uh, trying to trying to fathom what kind of mechanical because we're, we're all very limited in our thoughts. And I mean, the easy answer is just too easy. Oh, it's just, you know, it's just 
an error, you know, it's an error in the paperwork. No, that's just too easy. This water felt tinkered with, it felt siphoned, maybe siphoned. There's something going on and, and I don't understand it. It's one of those things where the technology is such that I, I'm not able to fathom at the moment, but I, I do feel it was moved. It was moved in some way, shape or form. Um, not able to see that just now, but it, it, it is strange how sometimes these uh, flooding issues just sort of show up somewhere, you know, after some weird anomaly. And are they able to move and shift things in a way that we are not aware? Would the control system ever hide anything like this from us? Hmm. Yeah, I'm seriously wondering because we know that there's anti-gravitational um, abilities that these UFO, UAPs, or uh, what's that term for underwater submerged vehicles as well, USOs, right? Um, they have anti-gravitational technology. So what if it was like right around or, or past, literally right underneath the buoy? Yeah. If it passed underneath the buoy and then all of a sudden all that water pressure that it's reading um, was changed by the gravitational field of, of the ship itself. That would that that, that would, would that would do it. I would yeah. think. Yeah, it, it it certainly would do it. You know, it's like with with this, we're gonna have to think way outside the box. I mean, it's it's great that people are bringing this to our attention, and now our job is to understand that it's not going to be a common um, a common thing that we might think it's not just a glitch in the paperwork it's more than that i feel more than that i feel technical i feel technology again i i feel something very deliberate in in a in a in a very strong sense so we're going to keep an eye on this and and see what happens there's a lot of weirdness going on over here you know this is the farthest south and the closest to antarctica pretty much too just saying um by the way also there's there's an awful lot of uh offline um buoys in the indian ocean for whatever reason right now it's a very high percentage so just an fyi and also we had this mariana maza mazukato uh contributor to the weefers uh we've covered this many times and uh said okay well you know agenda number one didn't seem to work out uh entirely uh the climate change people can't get it but everybody understands water yes yeah uh, water is pretty simple and what's up with this you know we we covered this before you know san francisco has uh, a chinese citizen chinese citizen on their election board overseeing elections yeah you know in, and came over immigrant everything but when you really look at it connected to corporations uh that are directly connected uh, to the ccp um but this infiltration they don't want to show um again you know there is one power structure it's subdivided into these different groups these individual groups certainly these are these are all very competitive people these are all people with a lot of ego and often a lot of greed so yeah they they always want to be the ones in the limelight that's just that's why they do this this is why celebrities do this and have to do certain things to get into the big club so yeah i mean you just it boggles the mind it really does this boggles the mind USDA Organic now allows glyphosate in organic hydroponic food production. Glyphosate, which we know is cancer-causing, which we know, I mean, they've paid out so much, uh, you know, Monsanto, etc. And, and, and <laughs> you know, stammering because it, it just, it, this is, how could this be allowed to go on? In lawsuits, they've lost so many lawsuits. They paid out billions in damages, billions and billions, billions. And here you go, the USDA organic, it's allowed. You know, it's it. You know what it does. Again, the USDA, uh, it just needs to be dissolved. 
Uh, that's what needs to be dissolved. You know, all the corporations do because Monsanto goes down. They just, you know, they just re-resurrect it in a different way. It, it, the corporate world is a shield for these people. This is really, really bad. I, I think what needs to be done is people need to work with their farmers at a very local level and and help them understand what this does to the gut lining. I mean, this totally destroys your gut lining and you need your gut lining so that you can um, so that your body can utilize the the vitamins and minerals that are in the foods that we eat. I mean, without that, you're not uptaking anything. You're continually getting sick. Not to mention this stuff is really, really, really bad for you. It's not like you can wash it off. Um, so this is just a total inside job. And I, I think people at the grassroots need to be calling farmers, calling their grocery stores and say, hey, you know, this isn't, this is not okay. I don't want to go down this path. And they will listen to money. That's the one thing they seem to hear. And you're, you know, again, why, I don't know why people would be using mouthwashes in this day and age. You know, again, when we were in the plague upon the land and everybody like 20 times a day was sterilizing their hands, that again is stripping all the good stuff off as well as anything that's potentially bad, putting stuff in your mouth that is going to disturb the natural balance of the microbiome. It's just a recipe, again, for suppressed immune systems and also, you know, all the chemicals, the dyes, et cetera, et cetera, that cause cancer. People wondered, wow, why do we have so much breast cancer? Well, what are you putting under your pits, your aluminum again? What's coming down from the sky? You know, it's it's toxic overload syndrome. And this is what cancer is. It's really a toxic overload syndrome. When we look to these many uh, sacred sites that have been repurposed into churches and cathedrals with big spires, and you wonder about gathering energy, sending it. I mean, we've shared that a lot of the energy from people in churches is really literally going to feed dark en en entities, uh, dark entities. It's being used as an energy resource and a food in churches, even in churches. And you look at uh, a circuit board, look at the, it's the exact same pattern. It's the exact same pattern. You know, again, this, there are no coincidences and they have you coming and going and I'm, I'm guessing maybe he would rather have flies. I don't know if he's got one of those frogs necks or whatever, but, you know, he certainly doesn't understand that you put the cheese on after the burgers cooked. Uh, you know, talk about photo ops. This is all politics always is. It's photo ops. Look, we're like you guys. We're just like you guys. Yeah. As the tongue comes out and snatches a flying insect. I know, or I don't know, maybe it's weird. Maybe he likes to eat the food raw. I don't know. It's just really awkward. And then we have this guy who Stop comes in. Lunch. Yeah, he stopped in to have a bite of sandwich because he smelled something cooking. And and now he, I think he feels bad because um, his friends left him. Well, he's just probably thinking he should have took a little dip and, and cleaned up at the stream before coming over for lunch. It's the proper thing to do. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Look forward to your comments. I understand a lot of times anywhere you could have problems commenting um, and also, you know, comments hidden. Uh, you know, I'll look when I see somebody says, oh, our, my comments keep getting erased and there's a little place to click and it'll show comments uh, published and comments um, that were not uh, approved or subject to approval and when I look over there, there's nothing there. So, you know, it's just the algorithms. But the next video on EE Arts is going to give you a, a little bit more of a clue. It's going to just be a less than 10 minute probably, and unless we get carried away. It's just one single topic, but it needs its own video. It does. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.